Hello and welcome to this video on acid-base strength. My name is Eri Kim and in this video we'll be working through the steps required to calculate the Ka of a weak acid. We discussed in another video how to draw the dissociation reaction for a weak acid and in this video we're going to use that knowledge to calculate some information about weak acids, namely the acid dissociation constant Ka. All K constants are equal to the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. So for the general acid dissociation reaction HA, the Ka will be the concentration of the conjugate base A- multiplied by the concentration of the hydronium ion divided by the concentration of the conjugate acid HA. Notice that water does not appear in the K expression. Remember that pure liquids and solids do not factor into K equations. There are two methods for calculating Ka, depending on the information given. If the pH of the solution and the initial concentration of the acid is given, then you can calculate the pH by setting up an ice table, then using the equation for calculating the hydronium ion using the pH value, then finally plugging the numbers into the Ka expression. I would recommend pausing here and going to the video lessons on ice tables if you haven't reviewed that information yet, since they are integral to the calculations required for Ka. The second method gives the percent of acid that is dissociated in equilibrium and the initial concentration of the acid. This allows us to calculate the concentration of the variables in the acid dissociation equation and then we can solve for Ka. Let's see an example of both methods in our apply question. Our first apply question asks us to calculate the Ka given the concentration of acid in a pH, which means we need to use the first method described earlier. The first step is to create the dissociation reaction of acetic acid and water, so acetic acid will donate a proton to water to form this acetate anion and the hydronium cation. The Ka expression will be the concentration of products over the concentration of the reactant, excluding water. Next, let's set up an ice table and fill it in. The initial concentration of acetic acid is 0.3 molar as given to us in the table, and it'll be 0 for hydronium ion and the acetate anion. The change will be minus x for acetic acid and plus x for both hydronium ion and the acetate anion, since for every molecule of acetic acid you dissociate, you form one molecule for hydronium and one molecule of acetate. The equilibrium concentration will be 0.3 minus x and plus x again for both hydronium and acetate. Next, we need to use the pH information to calculate the concentration of hydronium ion. Since pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of the hydronium ion, rearrange to solve for hydronium, which is 10 to the negative pH. 10 to the negative 4.76 equals 1.73 times 10 to the minus 5, which equals the concentration of the hydronium ion, but will also equal the concentration of the acetate anion. With this information, we can start filling in for the unknowns in our table. So that's 1.73 times 10 to the minus 5 for hydronium and 1.73 times 10 to the minus 5 for the acetate. That same x can also be replaced for the acetic acid concentration. So 0.3 minus 1.73 times 10 to the minus 5. Finally, solve for the Ka using the expression described earlier, inputting in the values from the ice table and plugging those values into a calculator gives us a Ka for acetic acid as 1.01 times 10 to the minus 9. So a Ka of 1.01 times 10 to the minus 9 represents the relative ratio of products over reactant at a pH of 4.76 and a molarity of 0.3 molars for acetic acid. The second applied question asks for the Ka given a concentration of acetic acid and the percent dissociated at equilibrium. So this question would involve the second method we described earlier. First step is always the dissociation reaction and the Ka expression, which is conveniently the same as the earlier question. Next, we calculate the concentration of acid that dissociates by converting the percentage into a decimal, so 0 0.0109, and multiply by the original concentration of 0 0.15 molar, to give us 1.635 times 10 to the minus 3. Since that is how much dissociates, 
that would represent the concentration of both the hydronium ion and the acetate anion. Since for every one molecule of acetic acid we dissociate, we form one molecule of acetate and one molecule of hydronium ion. The concentration of acetic acid that remains after dissociation will be 0 0.15 minus 1.635 times 10 to the minus 3. Finally, let's plug in the values in the Ka expression. We should get 1.635 times 10 to the minus 3 for the hydronium ion, 1.635 times 10 to the minus 3 for the acetate anion, and 0 0.15 minus 1.635 times 10 to the minus 3 for the acetic acid. And the Ka equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 which again represents the distribution of hydronium and acetate anions relative to the acetic acid at equilibrium. Great job working through these multi-step calculation questions. Remember to always start with the dissociation reaction and the K expression, and use the tools we've developed in earlier lessons on calculating pH and using ice tables to help you come to your answer.